Uh oh. One hour ago, Quesadilla is now in the app. What? I, I, Our friends at Chipotle are letting me know Quesadilla is now in the app. Oh. Uh, uh, normally, <laughs> the big conflict is when the beat's going to drop. <laughs> And so as we heard the build, and you're like, uh-oh. I'm like, what's wrong? When When it's is the beat going to drop? It's and then in I the hear, app. One hour ago. And I'm like, oh, my God. Did the beat drop an hour ago? And that's how far behind we are? Oh, they give you three sides. Look at that. All right. Hello, everybody. We're going to do weird things here in a minute. <laughs> How's everybody's Monday going? Uh, uh, wait, is that guacamole? <laughs> Man, it's been it's, a minute since I've done Chipotle. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, my Monday's fine. Uh, it's a weird Monday to wake up and 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 I, 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 I'm gonna curse because it's not on the podcast. Um, you're like, dang it! I've I've got four hours of shows I have to watch by five o'clock and have hot takes for them. Yeah. And I've been too busy making content Tur all, out, all week long. Turns out we have all been working. 13 out of the past 14 days. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Um, yeah, man. Uh, and, and, uh, and it, it is, it's weird, like, to wake up earlier than usual and say, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I don't have time to mess around playing with the kids or talking to you or petting the dog or any of that. I got to get straight to work. Oh, what's work? I have to watch four hours of television and think real hard about how I'm going to feel about them as I'm watching. Hmm. One day you'll get used to that, I think. <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> That's not that that should not be a human condition. <laughs> that George Jet, we, we live in the George Jets and, you know, your job is to press a button. You, you And you don't want that. No. Oh. He would hate That's to a simply no. press That's a, a hard button. No. He's, he's, yeah. he's dead inside. At least Fred Flintstone is 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 bowling. <laughs> it's Wait, George you, you, Jetson. You got is... you got you got the sense that George Jensen was materially less happy than Fred Flintstone. Yeah. He had he had everything, so he had to invent neuroses. Whereas, like, maybe he just had those neuroses. But meanwhile, Fred Flintstone is just living life, man. He goes out, he bowls, drinks some brewskis, works hard, the whistle blows, rides a dinosaur, tells some lies to his wife. Uh, I mean, he, cooks seemed, up he schemes seems like with his he's, boy. yeah, it seems like he also had had a lot of a lot of stuff going on. I like, I, I mean, I guess, you know, Jetson, he had that. You know, like maybe there was like an element that he found that his wife was like parasitic and his family was parasitic to him. I guess there's there's that kind of pathos. I mean, the Jetsons lived. Uh, George Jetson li was living. You know what? Ain't nobody said it before me. George Jetson lived an empty, vapid life. He was dead inside. He had a beautiful family and disposable yeah. income well, and a flowing, on, flowing to Brian, everything. To Brian's point. To Brian's point, remember his daughter did have a happy pill addiction. Uh, yeah, and 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 his wife, his wife couldn't even be bothered to show her real face when the phone rang. She would put on a fake face when the phone rang. Well, I mean that's like, that that's actually I mean that's a parallel to makeup. Um, in the in I mean human. like I, yeah. Also, you know, she she might as well have, have been the cat lawyer. Right, like like we're right. putting on fake faces. You're describing to the Zoom. Call now. <laughs> Zoom yeah. filters. Wait, it's a, yeah, yeah. It's the reverse. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, took, I took a meeting the other day with a cat, and it looked like a no, guy. It was it was it was uh, it was with uh, uh, somebody roughly of my age, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Ah, uh, look, I don't know how to say this. My daughter turned on a filter. I'm like, that's fine. You're a cat. You're a cat." <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna worry about it, and 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 like the meeting was more important than the filter, and uh, and then it turns on, and about halfway through, I figure out that the filter is enhancing his lips, and adding <laughs> eyeshadow. 
And I thought it was very adult of both of us to just look beyond that. Gorgeous. (laughs) Amazing. (laughs) Oh my gosh. All right, everybody. You want to do some weird things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Andrew, you good? As if we haven't already started. <laughs> All right. Then I'm going to count you in for weird things here in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hello, beautiful people. Didn't no filter here. This is an actual 46 year old man. Gotcha. Reads on a 47 year old level, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Justin Robert Young. Well, hello, friends. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. Am I am I real or or not? <laughs> well, you, can you can you even tell? That, that, Ooh, that was no, straight, that was oh straight no, to Bryce. eleven. <laughs> Just existential crisis immediately. <laughs> am I real? <laughs> Hi, everybody. So we had a kind of a cool thing over the weekend spacex which has decided the best way to keep your launch business busy is to be your own customer and they've done that with starlink where they're actually sending those satellites up to provide internet service which is actually available to people right now in certain areas and they keep putting up more and more satellites to increase the coverage area and then they did like two launches within like a week of each other, or really close to each other, which is insane. Yeah, d- d- and now, d- d- did I read? Did I read correctly? Like one of the engines, it was its ninth journey. Is the, d- 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 up and down. No, that's the story. Yes, Holy cow. this is a booster that it just did its ninth trip to space. Wow, the edge of space, the ninth booster. So I mean, time used rather. Wait, and 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 um, man, uh. Smart all around because um, if you're f- if you're looking to outward facing customers, every time something gets used when it comes to space travel, you get a little bit more suspicious of it. But if you have all the internal numbers that say, "Hey, man, more re- reliable than ever," um, then yeah, just keep sending up your own stuff uh, <laughs> and build the second internet. Well, and, and this is and this is also where the where where the rubber meets the road in terms of uh, the the point of this, which is that reusability brings down costs. Like that that is a thing that they can test in concept by bringing something back and then sending it back up. But this is where they generate the savings, right? By by sending this thing up as many times as they can. I mean, for, for me, the big question is what's there. Do they have a limit on it? Like, like what is, what is the goal? Uh, 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 15, well, 25, a hundred. There, there, there's some number, some amount of double dipping. They, they get to do because like on the one hand, there's inherent value. Like we are now in unprecedented territory where an engine has launched to space nine times in a row. So at this point, the data itself is extraordinarily valuable and it almost would be worth it to just keep on trying to see what happens. Um, On top of that, just every time you go up, throw a bunch of little mini sats (laughs) left and right, you know, and, and, and on top of that, take, Oh, I don't know, maybe the first, biological necessity that was created during my lifetime. It used to be food, water, shelter, uh, uh, love. <laughs> that was it. And then now it's food, water, shelter, love, and internet. <laughs> and it's, and, and just corner the market on that. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's uh, everything I'm seeing seems like a very, very smart play. And the advantage they have in particularly pushing this with the Starlink is that them being the customer, them knowing the cost of that versus, you know, losing a $600 million satellite by, oops, can't use it 11 times, should only stick to 10. Uh, but, you know, they've NASA's approved them for reflight for using passengers because they, they feel confident enough about it. And, you know, and yeah, there's the figuring out, taking them apart to figure out what you sort of measure, the brittleness of whatever materials, et cetera. But yeah, it's it's amazing, and this was a thing that uh, the rate at which they refly these two. I mean, we don't quite know the economics of how much they refurbish them, but you know, for them to be going this many times, it's got to be practical. Yeah, I, I well, or I mean, yeah, it, it, it's are are it's poss- possibly astonishingly practical. Like like that's going to be the surprise is 
just how much they're saving. Because really, if something returns back to Earth, appearing to be in, in fully reusable shape, it's just tests. Test, 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 test. Maybe, maybe, you know, I don't know, a few hundred thousand dollars of, eh, hey, let's be sure, let's be sure, let's be sure, let's be sure. And then pretty much <laughs> you got a free rocket to, 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 to go again. Yeah, do they have a sense of of how kind of unlimitedly they can reuse these rockets or these first stages? I mean, I'm obviously they're testing it now. They're kind of breaking through you know these these barriers so far but do they have a sense of like oh we're gonna use these like only about 20 times and then we're just gonna make a new one just to be sure or are these gonna be like elon, planes e- elon musk had said something about like 10 times would be the goal a stretch goal being like 100 okay <laughs> okay cool i mean yeah a one i mean even a one in 10 save uh, uh what a, a 10 times savings would be good but a, a, i'm sure 100 is even better this this might be a fun thought experiment and we can either root it in actual data or just make up the numbers but like when i get on a southwest airlines flight on a 737 um it never occurs to me to wonder how many times this craft has flown before how many quote unquote success successful missions it has accomplished um I, do you guys want to guess what what that number is or or do you want to to express what number would make you comfortable or uncomfortable uh, mm, mm. because because well, I mean, like 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 whether like i i don't really have a sense of anywhere between a thousand and ten thousand i seem fine with for some reason ten thousand feels like past that i'm like well, I don't know about this old bird, <laughs> but meanwhile, because it's a long, it's a long distance, right? It's I, I'm assuming it would be a longer distance that these, say, these engines are taking than say a cross country flight. Yeah, and a lot more stress during the trip. Yeah, yeah, because the in, in airplanes, the engines you mention you measure port, sort of by hours, and the airframe you measure by like trips because of the mm. different sort of stresses. So, like, there's engine hours, like. It's something like every two thousand hours or whatever is when they do like they do like an engine recheck or rebuild or whatever. Well, um, and then, you you know what's funny is I have no hesitation when it comes to boating technology. Like if you said we're going to take an overnight three day journey on a wind powered craft that was built in seventeen eighty seven, uh, I'd be out like. That sounds awesome. Wouldn't even worry about it. I would. I wouldn't even know why I should be worried. I mean, like in in, yeah. in the Oakland Harbor, uh, they've got FDR's private like yacht that just goes out for you know uh, historical tours, and you can rent it out for your for your big soiree. So it's like like that that stuff that you know just exists for commercial gain. Uh, and that's out there on the water. So I don't know. I guess the only thing that I would wonder if I'm looking at it skeptically is like, you know, Andrew mentioned before, we don't know exactly how much refurbishment there is. Like, are are we in a, a, a ship of thesis territory where it's like, oh, the same rocket's gone up nine times, but it's like it might have cost a lot of money to get it ready each time that that would mitigate what we assume to be gigantic savings Mm. well you can see as far as the external parts i can see the charring on that and whatnot that's a big cost of it is the airframe and then you you have the engines themselves which um you know they have a factory to produce these i don't i think they use the same engines because those things get relighted whatnot over and over again and so that's sort of like where the stability comes from and there are certain parts that they look for the brittleness i would imagine that I think most of it can be built for reusability. And also like another thing that's kind of cool was a week ago when they were going to do the starship test, they're like, Oh, we have a problem with what our Raptors and we're this, we joked about this on the show. Like we're this NASA or conventional aerospace, like, you know, be like, Oh, we'll see you next year for the next test. You know, SpaceX like, Oh no, we'll swap that out this afternoon. Like faster than going to your car mechanic. You know, to get yeah. an engine replaced in your in your car takes longer than for them to replace a rocket engine in a you know a Starship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I bet. I think in terms of number of trips, I 
I think the number of trips acceptable for an engine will go up as we get closer to consumer grade, right? Once this becomes even a little more time trust time time tested, there's there's a little more a sense of like, okay, these are the things that we need to maintain these things on after ten, a hundred, a thousand flights, what have you. Um what yeah, in building Starship, Bryce, you know, mm-hmm. part of the goal there was they took everything they, you know, Falcon 9 reusability came midway through Falcon 9 already being a thing. And the Falcon 9 today is a very different rocket than before, but still from the design process forward, reusability was sort of a, oh, I guess we could do this now. And then with Starship, it was let's design this to be reusable right from the beginning, which is why that's like easy with, or excuse me, Starship, like it's easy to swap certain things out. They know, okay, we got to pull pull this engine out. We got to do this. And so that's where with Starship, you're going to be looking at something. Elon's talked about how one, one Starship could do the total launch capacity of like the entire, you know, planet in like a day. And people are like, no, but you still can't fit that much into the Starship. And Elon's talking about the idea like, yeah, but it'll do three launches in a day because uh, it'll just be yeah. that reusable. Wait, uh, the cap- uh, sorry. How much capacity? Uh, uh, the, the huge. Uh, <laughs> basically, pick a pick a big number, and uh-huh. then and then and then have the world scratch their head and say, uh, "But but but, how would you get all that up in one rocket?" And he's like, "No, dummy, you would just take three trips." And it's like, "Oh, like like you've got a U-Haul van, and you can move uh-huh. the same amount of 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 uh, tonnage as an eighteen wheeler uh, in one day." And it's like at at, at, a, at, a, at a fraction of the cost. You're like, well, that's not possible. How do you pack all of that into a U-Haul? It's like, well, you go back and forth three times. And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's literally how I moved into my house. Uh, but you cheated. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>, right? <laughs> uh, 100 tons. 100 tons to space. Okay. That's pretty good. Oh, now you're going to buy? You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, no, shaming, nah. no shaming, no shaming, no shaming, no shaming. All uh, skeptical, Bryce. No shaming. Of course, I'm, and I know how much 100 tons is, and I can picture that easily, Look, and I can rotate it in my mind. Take it from yep. old space elevator Bri Bri <laughs> that, 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 that the grudges should not be held on this program. No grudges. <laughs> no grudges. I'm Googling how many humans is 100 tons. Uh, in America, one hundred. Oh, <laughs> hey, baby! Oh, 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 God, hashtag got him. Maybe <laughs> mix in a salad, America. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, 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 the funny thing, the sad thing is, is you look at they're like how close a couple other countries are that like a one percent margin that like oh the Americans this it's like I can name like three other countries that like but then the error margin pretty much the same yeah but hey we're not gonna let anybody take that title away from us hell right? no uh-uh uh it you was, said it was 100 uh, tons yeah uh, 100 tons 100 yeah. tons so that would be about 11 th- uh, assume, obviously you can't 11, pack people but it would be 1100 fine people. it'd be 1100 or so people that, but that would be liquefying them into a pure, <laughs> into a pure block of people. So gotcha. maybe a it couple be, less. So one. A few less. <laughs> so There's like Justin, a selection like... bias for the type of people who will take that ride. And it's like, uh, on the one hand, it's very cramped. On the other hand, I touched a booby. <laughs> <laughs> Invertebrates are phase one. They are priority booking. <laughs> 30 RAV4s. Oh, okay. 30 RAV4s. Would that be the, nice. the all-new RAV4 hybrid oh from Toyota? <laughs> Just checking. Uh, well, you want to know what is uh, also guaranteed. That's your enjoyment. When you uh, donate to patreon.com slash weird things. If you uh, go over there right now, you can uh, uh, kick us a couple uh, couple dollars an episode. You can get your custom RSS feed. You can get our After Things podcast before anybody else. It's just a better way to live, friends. Patreon.com slash weird things. Sorry, this, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. This is a bank of some sort? No. It's a website. Uh, they're not a it's bank. It's a website. It's not a bank. It's it, but it, it does involve money. Mm-hmm. Uh you 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 deposit your uh a weekly donation yes. into this podcast, and what you get back is inner peace, joy, and early access Actually, to the After Things podcast. I just realized it's, it's a reverse bank. 
you deposit money and you receive our interest in your opinion. Uh, <laughs> like, no, uh, no, this, I'm on to something here. Come on. All right. Yeah, no, I, it's like one of those banks where it's just like the little hand comes up and takes your money, <laughs> except, <laughs> except like you have no way to get it back. It just, it just goes away forever. <laughs> Please give us your money. It will not go into a box where it cannot be recovered. No. It can support this, this us. that instinct where Bryce is like, guys, seriously, come on. Like, like, yeah. I, does, does, do any of us oh, no, want no, no, this no, to no, make no, money, no. We, please? We can recover it. Yeah. We recover uh, it. You can't recover right. it. You, the listener. It's, like the most, such a- <laughs> it's the most secure form of cryptocurrency where exactly. what you spend it, it self-destructs yes. and nobody can use it. The worst description of bartering I've ever heard. It's, a, it's the ultimate. It is simply a transaction. <laughs> it's it's the ultimate uh, uh, NFT, non fungible token, mm-hmm. in that we take it and you can exchange it for nothing. You can exchange it for mushrooms. <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah. Also, the mushrooms are metaphorical. Do we? No do we want to do a little brief? MF- NFT. NFT I, I, I actually, I, I, I've been out of the loop on most of this, so I would actually love to get caught up on on. I'm actually what is bullish known. on it. Um, really? Yeah, I but, am. Yeah. Okay. First of all, so crypto is cryptocurrency because it it is definitely scarce, and uh, I mean, unless you're Dogecoin, if you're a real cryptocurrency, it's the scarcity that gives it real valuable. Uh, or it, real it, value. it, it oh, functions God, like I, a. Can I do? Can I do real cryptocurrency? I'm doing air quotes, everybody. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. right, sure, sure, sure. But, but I mean, but, cryptocurrencies but, but, function as a as a currency. But meanwhile, non fungible tokens mm-hmm. sound like hand stamps. They're zip file. They're you're you, basically you, a zip. Okay, file. like, like right. just right. keep right. on, on, on stamping all, no. all the hands, and everyone can Before, have well, a star. No, no, no. no. So, so here's here's the key. Don't even focus on the scarcity. Right. Right. Focus on the fact that each Bitcoin can be deliberately identified and tracked. Like, That's what the blockchain is. Right. Like just literally like, there's, like there's only focus only on the one, idea that and we know it started here and then went yes. to and then went to and then went and then to. went to right, and did, right, OK. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing you really need to know with NFTs is that that technology exists. So now take that idea and now apply it to whatever level of digital collectible you can think of and say that, all right, we are minting 50. This artist is, is saying that they're going to mint 50 of whatever for, for, for Brian, Brian is going to mint 50 gifts of that time that he shot himself in the mouth with the Nerf dart gun and fell over. (laughs) Right. Right. Okay. Okay. But and now, and, 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 uh, they'll be special because like uh, the, they'll have like a the more you know signature at, no, at the bottom. Nothing. No, oh, nothing. Wait. Literally just. But but just there's already a, bi- a billion of them out there right now. That's and, right. and that's right. And yes, correct. <laughs> only fifty of them will have that blockchain technology for which you are able to say this is the one of one or one of 50. This is two of 50. This is three of 50 and so on and so on. So yes, you can see that GIF wherever you want, but because of the NFT and the blockchain, you don't really, you will know that you purchased the one of the 50. And it is, it is like, because it's ordered like, like any kind of baseball card or anything like that. uh, You can prove relative to the others that you sold that there are are ones that are more highly valued than anything. Only think of NFTs as as or the blockchain as like the cardboard or 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 the foil for which just denotes the fact that it is a thing and it was produced by the 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 production house that put it out into the world. It, that's it is, ba- that's the only thing you need to realize. It, it's like the fine art market, but now the it's digital in, in digital goods instead of paintings and sculptures. Uh, I mean, you say the fine art market. The first thing I think of is the International Star Registry, <laughs> where they promote yes. themselves. I, as yeah, being I, I also the, agree. The that that okay, is what okay, a lot okay, is okay. going on. Okay. Is okay. like yeah, people yeah. stealing. Hey, wanna buy a star? Sure. Wanna buy the <laughs> pop tart cat? Actually, the pop tart cat guy did put it make he, he officially make, make NFTs, one but a yeah. lot of the memes you can go buy memes and some of them are not 
that's the thing is you can you can say this person is is selling you this thing but there's still not any authenticity of like are you allowed to sell this thing what do you actually get out of this thing um a, a, the big the big one has been uh top top shots is that what it's called the uh, top shot is yeah that was uh, sanctioned by the nba and they are selling moments from i believe this season only and not Everybody, not every season or not every thing is great, but uh, you do get the fact that, uh, all right, well, if I'm going to buy this uh, uh, person who's uh, been okay uh, and it's in, in the uh, you know, low 25s of a 500, uh, you know, a 500 NFT run, then I know that I'm going to be able to sell it in the way that you would a baseball card or a basketball card going forward. The the reason why this is taking off now is because all collectibles have exploded during the pandemic. People people sat in their apartments and they were like, "What the hell am I going to do with all this time?" and they 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 you know, felt nostalgic for their childhood and they decided to fill out those Pokémon card uh, uh collections. They decided to um to do, you know, uh, basketball cards and football cards and, and and stuff like that. And so this is, you know, a digital version of that idea. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that that's kind of a good overview. Would, would you say, Andrew? Yeah, I'm just listening because I'm fascinated. I, I don't have a take. I, I, have, I actually had a conversation last night on Twitter with all people, but Rony Abramowitz, creator of magic leap about this because he tweeted something i responded and he tweeted back to me and i i don't i can't predict when you're talking about things that aren't uh because it's literally non-fungible when you talk about you know the idea uh and, and it's a thing with doesn't really have intrinsic value because like the top shots things are fascinating because like would you like to own you know this you know clip of you know lebron james making a dunk and be like yeah we don't really own it. You can't license this or sell it. You just, you just own this. You're the first person. You have a trading card say, that is but, but yeah, digital. But, and so but, uh, yeah, very, let me finish. Yes. Oh, sure, 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 yeah. Sure. I get but the fact that the NBA says, yes, you have this. Like, then mm -hmm. it's like, well, yeah, that is, that, that is, that is to people. There's a value there. There absolutely is a value there because that authenticity, the people who can assign the rights and can, you can say this like, yeah, it's why, you know, you could in a perfectly rational cold economist world trading cards wouldn't exist you know all these yeah. other everybody and you would and brands like gucci wouldn't exist either but the reality is that these things are worth hundreds of billions of dollars and that they have tremendous amount of value to people you know autographs you know uh, etc so like i the rational part of me goes but wait i'm like well there's a big part of the world that doesn't follow the way you think things should behave andrew so it's fascinating so and 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 the other thing is that it solves a market efficiency in collectibles or market inefficiency in collectibles where uh you have to find out whether or not this collectible was kept in the right amount of shape you have to authenticate it to make sure that it's not a fraud in the autographs market fraudulent autographs are like rampant right so that mm -hmm. that that's a problem here you can buy and sell these things like they're stocks through their own internal system and you have the blockchain to back up the fact that, okay, this was purchased here. It was sold to there and you would know the prices on, on all of them. And so now for people who want a more, uh, a, a, a quicker back and forth in a collectibles market, they, that they enjoy doing that. Now it, it solves that kind of market inefficiency for super buyers and sellers. I think I think the problem we're going to see the collapse we're going to I think it has a long term value. The collapse we're going to see is the 1990s Marvel DC all that comic book covers and the special editions where they said, "Oh, we can make money." Well, great. Well, now we'll do the 10th special edition. We'll do all these things, and that kind of almost destroyed the comic book industry because they just kept producing all these new things that they could. Oh, we can. We're selling these video clips, but let's sell this other thing now. Let's sell the still. Let's sell this. Let's over, sell that. Over and exploiting the market. Yeah. So here's one way I could see things really having, having explosive value. Um, 
for, uh, for example, and, and I, I, I wish I could come up with a non-politicized version of this, uh, but, but, but I can't summon one fast enough, but, but like, um, uh, uh, there are allegedly clips of, of Donald Trump saying uh, uh, distasteful things on The Apprentice. There are companies that own all of those clips. There are, clip, uh, there are clauses that say if this ever gets released, then you're, you're in breach of contract and that's a million dollars or whatever. Um, but if you released a hundred second or let's say a 200 second particularly juicy behind the scenes moment and you sold it two seconds at a time, each one, uh, uh, authenticated, uh, uh, and, and, and like, like anybody right now can use deep fake technology to make, uh, uh, you know, Donald Trump be saying whatever terrible thing they want. But the idea that this is a traceable blockchain uh, 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 has, a, has a providence that, that could be traced all the way back to the source. Well, like, uh-huh. like selling that off two seconds at a time uh, uh, could suddenly become was like, well, yeah, we're going to we're going to pay the million dollar penalty and we're going to make. Eighty million dollars on selling all of these two-second uh, clips. Okay, so now, yeah, you're you're uh-huh. you're you're trying to figure out how to get beyond whatever you know. If 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 Mark Burnett and Donald Trump had a falling out, and now Mark Burnett wanted, let's imagine that he was strapped for cash and and couldn't handle paying lawyers or whatever, and wanted to make it a one-for-one money transaction that actually made cash for him. And, and that, that, and, that, would, and likewise, that would be a way to do it. Let's say somebody with a cell phone was at the right place at the right time. Like basically you're selling true news in a world where anything could be faked. Well, you suddenly, if yeah, you got, I, I, if you got the best shot of mm-hmm. again, terrible thing, I, I can't come up with anything better. You know, the, a uh, uh, plane one colliding with the world. Goodness gracious. Jesus Christ, Christ almighty. Uh, no, nothing. Part, part, part of the, a uh, part of the issue that I've seen with NFTs is when it's when you have an item in the system. So, real quick, time out. Two out of three of you guys just assume that 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 my 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 heart shouts. I'm happy about this, and war no! profiteering is the future of NFTs. No, I'm not. No, I'm <laughs> just, not saying that you're happy about this. I'm saying. Nothing. You couldn't could say any a example song of news or of, of a of movie. Any, any moment of sorry, news sorry. ever. Okay. Uh, you want to try to top that? What's a news moment where it was more this important is... than ever to know the authenticity and 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 but have that's... the right shot at the right okay. time? A, this is not de-escalating. And B, this 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 <laughs> leads into something that I'm I want to say is that just because you have an item in this system doesn't necessarily mean that it is true or has any sort of authenticity. You can only yeah. show that who is the seller and who are the various buyers so so correct and also this is my last button and an amount uh, like like uh, there'll be some version of sotheby's somebody who is in the business of verifying we know this is authentic that's why there's only 20 of them they're being split into two second chunks and now they're up for auction okay well All that's right. what Number you're one, seeing is companies come out to do that Christ, christie's yeah. christie's is that. already doing that oh really? already doing yes it. yes Christie's is already uh, uh, in the NFT game. They have uh, presided over some of the biggest sales, and they are they are not an, uh, an authentication agent. Um, Brian, you have kind of taken the conversation sort of like two steps beyond the uh, uh, kind of like basic understanding of it, and and you are saying like, all right, is there a way that you can totally reshape the concept of news, right? Like, in now instead of a like now what we think of as like buying the newspaper for posterity or buying some element of, of things for, for posterity. Now, could you really have that on a digital level? And then on a more granular concept, could you own a part of a major gigantic news story? And that could be your own collectibles market. Um, that, 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 that is a fascinating I- idea, but I would encourage people to just, if you are, if you, if you have no idea what this stuff means at all, then just think of them like it's not like you're selling the news itself. You are buying the collectible trading card version of the news. You don't own the rights. Right. You don't own anything in the same way that when you buy a LeBron James rookie card, you can't then go print up T-shirts with the LeBron James rookie card art on it. You don't own that photo. You don't own his likeness rights. 
you own a card with that picture printed on oh, it. And in a lot of like, cases, uh, uh, huh? uh, oh, sorry, if, if I'm right in reading that, it's the difference between uh, you could take a picture of anything and claim it's a piece of the Berlin Wall, but uh, if you actually own one particular piece of the Berlin Wall, then you could take those as many pictures from as many different angles as you want. It's a it's an actual asset uh, because you know you're the only one that owns that piece of the Berlin Wall. Um, no, I mean the, the NFTs in these cases would be the pictures you're making of the Berlin Wall. Like you are you are selling the picture. They don't own they don't own your piece yeah. of the Berlin like, Wall. They don't own the right to reproduce it. They don't even really own the photo. What they own is the file. A that digital. you sold them a, a file yeah. that's that's all they get it's like uh and, and, I, I believe like grimes was selling uh offering music and video gift things on on nft uh and my understanding from that transaction is you don't own the song you know you don't know the copyright or the master tapes or any of the rights to it you have a token that says i'm the person who owns the digital the digital signal of this music clip and yeah, in like, a lot like, of cases, it, it, there's it's not even like say exclusive. It's not like you're buying the Wu Tang album and you're choosing what to do with it. A lot of this is here are some gifts or like in the top shop here are videos that anybody with OBS or Xplit can can copy. And, and, and totally understood that that's where we're at now. But I'm I'm fascinated with the version where the Wu Tang album. Uh, there are 25 variations with digital signatures. So. Uh, you will know which of the 25 instances are out there. You can reproduce it. You could sell it. You could stream it. You could do whatever, but, but we'll know where it all came from. And then uh, I, 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 I don't know. There, there, there's something about that authenticity uh, uh, provenance that I think is, is, is really, really powerful. Uh, that is, it is a fascinating idea that you, you could be a band and say, yeah, we're going to have, we're going to sell 50,000 authenticated copies and people out there might buy the pirated ones or whatever, but to have a collection of the authentic copies will have value, even though it is the same thing, plays the same, everything else about it is the same. But, you know, the same reason somebody gets a tattoo or wants to say, I am a real fan and I support a thing. You know, the comment I made to Bromwitz was that, like, it'll be very interesting because, like, a lot of the reasons people use their hatred of the of the record labels is an excuse for piracy is one of the reasons to do piracy like ah well the record labels screw people over so i'm just going to download this well you're kind of screwing over the band too but whatevs um here when it's more tied directly to the creator and there will be middle people but the middle people are invisible and the middle people are just more the authenticator then the idea is like no i really support this band i will buy their music and here's the proof that i have it and then if i want to sell this special edition later on i can do that well and this uh, uh, by, 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 by the way kings of leon already doing this kings of leon with their most oh, recent yeah, album I know. The number is of, yeah the, yeah the abramovich company is about like making music and stuff that's for this like yeah that's it's all so, over yeah. yeah two two quick thoughts one we already have a case where uh, number one uh this is a simple middle road for somebody like uh, chance the rapper who was famous for never selling his music full stop like like just everybody take everything i'll make it uh, at concerts and merch or whatever uh yeah. now there is until a, until until he did well, correct, but 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 again, now all of a sudden there's an easier middle ground of uh, we're going to do a run of this many uh, authentic albums or whatever. But then also, imagine what happens when when dance clubs, when uh, streaming channels, when when uh, uh, Twitch and so on, like hey, we are a NFT only shop. If you if you can't prove the provenance of what you're playing, you don't get to do it here. Well, My I mean, I, 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 I think we're, we're, we're getting into this idea of, of authentication and, uh, uh, you know, kind of, uh, proving that you own it, uh, uh, in, in a more retail sort of way. And maybe that is eventually where we get to, uh, the market that exists now is purely on a collectible level. Sure. And so like what, what I think is kind of interesting as we're talking through this, it's like, We've spent a lot of time on this show uh, and and in our careers talking about monetizing audiences that are sometimes very big and you have a lot of options on big audiences and sometimes very small. Patreon changed the game in doing that. But if you've got a small audience and all of a sudden you're a podcast and you're like, hey, 
uh, I'm doing, you know, uh, uh, three NFTs of each podcast episode that we do. You can own your collectible of that favorite podcast episode. And now you guys can trade amongst each other, uh, you know, by creating this verifiable offered by the creators uh, artifact. Like that's that now just what, what this opens up is the realm of digital collectibles and, 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 on, and on a level that we've never really seen it. Before. I, I, I assume that baked into NFTs is a complete, uh aftermarket experience that the creator either can or cannot participate in uh based on their wishes like 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 creator gets a taste of every trade afterwards or you creator, can uh, you can or the creator is like do whatever you want bid it up uh let's let's like again back to the um uh, uh the actual clip at the moment like it's like hey we are now announcing we're gonna scrub from the internet we're gonna make copyright takedown notifications everywhere it's seen there's one clip that we own and it's brian pretend you know stuffing a nerf gun in his mouth and uh we have the rights to remove it from any reputable site anywhere uh uh but if you buy the token you can do whatever you want with but, it but don't even think about it like you're ex the, 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 this is exclusionary and now you're bully and now you're trying to rip it down the 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 the, the real kind of like next level idea is that how do you create scarcity in a world of abundance right right you don't try to then make it more scarce we've been trying to make things more scarce so you can enforce value for since the beginning of the internet and it's a loser's game we've watched it over and over again right uh now sure there's a billion different gifts but there's only one that's been blessed Right. And that's what matters. Right. It doesn't matter if, if it's everywhere else. Doesn't matter if you even have the ability to put it wherever you want. You don't want to put it wherever you want. You want to keep it for yourself and then maybe find some keychain that, that can exclusively show NFTs or something like that that can authenticate them so you can have some sort of element to it. But this is not about you getting the only one. It's about you getting the one that's been blessed. Right. And, and, I suppose it's it's interesting because I'm thinking back to all of the proxies we've attempted to put together to compensate for this this uh, this lack of technology beforehand. For example, um, uh, in 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 a time where uh, some people knew me from magic, some people knew me from scam school, a few knew me from you know TV. Uh, uh, the only people I would care about would would be people flashing our gang sign. And it's like, I suddenly knew something real and true. Like the only way you got to our gang sign was by going through the gauntlet of, of riding the wave of, of BB Live Show, NSFW and Night Attack. Um, and now that can be digitally signed. So like if I get an email from someone who says, I've been following you ever since blank, in fact, I am one of three owners of this one clip. And then I see some kind of digital signature. I'm just like, this person has my full attention right now. Uh, and and yeah. what, uh, what can I do for you? A hundred percent. I think. And, and that's, and that's something where, uh, where we're just in, in a lot of ways, as soon as I kind of crocked the idea of NFTs, I'm like, Oh wow. It's kind of odd that we're sort of just, getting here, or I guess this is one of the, the, the pandemic things where it's like collectibles got super hot and everybody's in, in is sufficiently online for this to kind of get a, a level of critical mass. And then of course the thing that's driving the coverage is the fact that, you know, some of these things are selling for some ridiculous amount of money. Uh, by, but being bought by other companies heavily invested in NF NFTs taking off too. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, and, 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 I don't, I'm not here to vouch for the current market. <laughs> like yeah, I have no here. idea where this goes. Uh, but I do think that like, hell, just even look for the, 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 the stuff that we do. Like if, if, you know, Andrew sells a, a, a first draft or, or a copy of one of uh, his, you know, one of, one of the books that, that, that's, that's uh, so funny you that still you still have that. full rights to, right? Like, uh, uh, at, or, or we do clips from 
uh, night attack or 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 anything else that we own all all the full rights to i don't know if it would have you know a billion or you know, a million or whatever these some of these gaudy figures are but like will super fans who will will there be super fans that are sufficiently online and have their worth and have a, a sense of worth to a digital file would they want that as well, opposed and, to not wanting it so i i say maybe i i i say 100 <laughs> percent yes and we've already seen it in the bootleg tape market of you know the 70s and 80s and so on for example like the idea of an album is going to come out on thursday and there'll be some minor tweaks to it between now monday and and thursday when it comes out when it comes out you'll be able to get it for free ad supported or maybe you are paying for a service or maybe you bought the album you whatever it is you'll get the final one but if you want one of 20 of the last minute very few changes are going to be made it's pretty much the full album we're almost there and it's monday we're going to make this available and and in uh, that idea of the artist being able to get to get a take uh, to get a taste of all the trades afterwards is fascinating because usually when you make a change before release, it's because it's something that you're embarrassed of or worried about, or you don't think is going to play, but for some reason becomes very, very special to people. And the idea that down the road, it's like, Oh my God. I, I mean, um, God, baby, I'm just going to be king of the terrible oh, uh, no. Uh, analysis. No, uh, no. Uh, the Black Eyed Peas released a song. Uh, most people oh, know it oh, by my one God. name and not the other. <laughs> right. Uh, so imagine if the 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 first one, which by the way was in the movie Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. I uh, 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 imagine if that one was a, an NFT okay. and just everyone knew the other one. I mean, look, I, I think that you are, you're on the right track, but I still think you're gilding the lily. The okay. point is not that it has to have that special thing to it. The point is that it's just the blessed one. Like, like you are still thinking in a world where, oh, well, well, this is valuable because it's the misprinted Mickey Mantle. And that's what, that's what sets it apart. That this is not, you don't need that. It's not even that. This is you, you, it's, well, I mean, maybe, maybe it will down the line, right? Maybe this is the, the another permutation on it, but that is, that is a, a relic of physical thinking in, uh, uh, in a imagine, way that. Imagine I wanted to build a media, like streaming audio empire, and I wanted to provide people the ability to buy physical pieces of it, but I was afraid that it might fall apart at one point. And I might have to demolish the building that it's set in. Sorry, or hold on. Let those. me. Uh, I, 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 I'm ah. sweating a little bit. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna use my, my sweat. Brick pad. shaped. <laughs> brick shaped. Uh, pad. But it, but Sorry, like, you, you were saying. About, <laughs> uh, I was thinking it's like kind of like like uh, I wasn't speaking to me. I was thinking of something else that did this, but like you know, a virtual brick, if you will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a virtual uh, brick. <laughs> you can't use it. Doesn't do anything for you. But I gotta say, hey, I own a virtual brick. You know. I, uh, I, I've got, um, uh, a, a thought about this and I'll, we'll see what you guys think about it. But I, I, I think the, the mechanisms and the ideas behind NFTs make sense, right? Like, um, I think the value of having, uh, you know, saying, okay, this good is traceable back to this original source, um, I think is, is a very valuable technology. I also don't know that it needs to be attached to cryptocurrency. Like, no, I think that's I, what does it. But it, I, it's, but, it's, it's I mean, the blockchain. But uh, the, yes, the blockchain, but not necessarily crypto. a, a cryptocurrency. I, 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 like, I, I, like if we're if we're saying that okay, this kind of well, I guess we haven't said that. But if if the idea is okay, maybe this kind of democratizes or sets a good standard for digital art or digital collectibles. Um, in the future, then having it only accessible via cryptocurrency with, with itself well, its own wildly fluctuating yeah, value. Yeah, but like Ethereum, it's ba most of them are based on Ethereum, and Ethereum's a thing. It's there. It's established. You don't have to rebuild this entire infrastructure for signing and stuff. And stuff. Ethereum exists, and mm -hmm. I think that's the advantage of it is that otherwise you have to build this third party system for authentication that everybody believes in, where Ethereum is there it exists and so you can say okay we'll we'll, we'll tie it to that 
I, um, I I just think that that's a that's a big barrier to entry to to a, a portion of, oh, to a part oh, of the population, totally. and I and I also think that th- there's probably a conversation better had certainly by people who I I don't know enough ab- about it, but I think in terms of the environmental impact of cryptocurrencies, oh. um, it, it, that that seems like a tough thing to keep this all afloat uh, as well. I, I, I hear you. That's been my biggest criticism about Bitcoin is that it is extremely damaging to the environment when you look at the amount of energy it takes to produce it. And it's, it's, it's absurd. And it's one of the things that people involved in kind of hand wave away. Um, but Coinbase, you know, is a company that's got this crazy huge valuation now because their whole idea is like, well, let's simplify this. Like, let's, you know, like if you build a system where if you go, you can buy this points now, if you want to go buy one of these top shots things, I don't even, I'm not even aware if, you know, you're using real dollars. I just go use real dollars and I've bought this thing and there might be, you know, I don't know if they're using a theory, but there's this basis by which it's established and that becomes sort of invisible to people who don't care or know. So one of the things that we did in the mystery box campaign for Mono Rogue is we had a USB drive that had on it three lost episodes of uh, the Mono Road. These were episodes where we got like 80% of the way there and we got up to the point where we say out loud, yeah, we'll just do that and follow it up. And then it's like, you know, narrator voice, they didn't, you know? Yeah. And it's like uh, fully edited most of episodes or whatever. And it's like, uh, those are not going to be very valuable for us to put on our channel. We might be able to get something out of them by putting them on the scam stuff channel or whatever. However, when you're buying a mystery box and one of the mysteries that you get is along with a whole bunch of other stuff, stuff that, that, that wouldn't have intrinsic value to other people. For example, the complete pitch document for the show that became hacking the system. Like you get all 12 pages of, of how we spelled everything out on there. Um, all of those things, uh, the, the only way like if, if, if you're blindly spending money and what you want is surprises and delights, then that's a fine way to do it. But then all of a sudden it occurs to me that an incomplete episode you could sell as is like, Hey, this was meant to be a teacup, but it's got a giant crack down it. Probably not very good for holding tea. Uh, would you like to buy it? There's only five of them or however. But many. let me, let me, let me, let me again. Cause you're thinking about, the, the 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 old model. Of, well, I'm thinking about collect- I, I, collectibles, like people. Sure, who are fans, exactly. Yeah. All right, yeah. But what would you more like a reminder and memento of uh, the episode that was not released? That might be there for some people, right? But also, what this offers is like, oh no, I want to buy the the Harmontown episode I listened to when I found out I was getting my job promotion. And now I always remember that one joke, the first time that they sang this song that I remembered, I just want to have that memento. Like yeah, I want to have the jokes. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. The that, bits that I own this commemorative or, or, gif of this episode. That's interesting. So, so then what you're really buying is so, so right now, let's say it's somebody, commemorative plates, it's commemorative plates. Well, that's not a bad way to put it. So yes. right now, right now, the only model, let's say what I really want is all of the Dan Harmon freestyle raps. Uh, I want nothing else from the hundreds of episodes over the sure. last 10 plus years. Um, yeah. and In fact, do me a favor and cut off the dumb parts on there. Right now, the only option someone has is to do it as a labor of love and then release it for free. But now, uh, in partnership with Harmontown or whatever, they could make this mega mix and and say, I would like to do a release of your own content in partnership with you. It's simpler. Literally, I own, you own the YouTube timestamp from here to here. There does not have to be an exchange of files or goods. It's literally in this. from this I, second I, to this but, second. I mean, it can't. I, maybe, I think what maybe. you're trying to say is that yes, it would be cool to do that also. What well, exactly? I, I think. I think my desire is to constantly figure out how to add value. And what I'm hearing yes. from all three of you is that's the problem. You collectible that's the problem. Market, market does not need to do that. You're trying to add value. We don't need to because it's intrinsically there. Yeah, yeah. And 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 if anything, now you as a a a a fan of Harmontown with disposable income can now hunt down all of the freestyle raps that you think are the best to complete your, an NFT collection that you care about Mm -hmm. that, that that's why it's worthwhile. So the idea of them 
making a new thing is unnecessary. I think I almost have it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I think you do have it. No, I think no, no, you're just coming no, no. up yeah. with new yeah. ideas. Okay, okay. We keep so, saying so, you so, don't need to my, do. Right. My, my last, my <laughs> last <laughs> metaphor. My last uh, metaphor. Uh, uh, imagine uh, John F. Kennedy rolling down <laughs> Dallas Dealey Plaza. <laughs> I was gonna say I ran a, a triathlon. <laughs> I ran Contra. Oh, what? I I I I did a triathlon and people took pictures as I crossed the finish line. Yeah. And they said, "Would you like to pay us fifty dollars for this picture of you crossing the finish line?" Sure. Uh, and I said, I said, yes. And uh, likewise, uh, uh, and, and they added no value outside of just being there and letting me have it. Um, yes. So, yeah. Okay. That's value. Yeah. I mean, they, that, so, again, yeah. that's, that's, them, that's you, someone making then, something. Then I added value. Okay. Be because <laughs> ultimately what NFTs are now is someone saying, would you like to own what your place was in the, the race? And you would get a token you know a, a virtual coin that says brian owns coming in third place yeah. in the triathlon not yeah. e, not yeah. even thank necessary. you for putting me in i almost said 50th i almost uh, said 50th uh, and i uh, thought even that would have been kind okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> um so it's I, it it's it's very strange because it, it it's it's like I, I think it does mirror a lot of the way the fine art world is, where the value is just what people place on it, and and yep. just all of the stories and behind behind these Beanie things. Babies. And they and it's very different from commercial art, which is meant to be at a cons more meant to be at a consumer price point, aesthetics and 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 whatnot. Um, I I I wonder how. I wonder how this ends up shaking out because a, a lot of the stuff like it. it this is not how consumers are con how consumers consume things digitally, right? What they're selling yeah. is basically gifts, and anyone with very with free, very popular software can just copy a gif. You can just right click on on a gif, and and so in in in, I I'm interested in seeing how this all shakes out from the everyday consumer who NFTs ultimately are not really for, I think. And kind of the collectibles or fine fans. art market, yeah. and, uh, hardcore okay. fans. Yeah, you ready? And collectors. I got, yeah. I got, I got one last business plan. Oh, okay. No. Ford Theater. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the GOP can have this. The Dems can have it. The Libertarian Party can have it. The Green Party can have it. Mm -hmm. A market for deleted tweets. But then, I mean, then, then you get an ownership. Who well, uh, does Twitter? Is Twitter selling them? Who can own? Sorry, technically, I mean, if they you're are, talking about they authenticity, are verified screen caps of tweets before they got deleted from the enemy. So it's like if if you're on Team Purple and somebody on Team Green says something that they don't like, uh, and somebody grabbed a screen grab of it, and now it's gone or whatever, you can own one of 50 copies of that those words that they can mm -hmm. never unsay of those things of those things that can't take okay. I guess realistically but, yeah. you wouldn't want there and to be a paper be, trail of who is selling and who is buying those things what, what, what you would be supporting your purple team in this scenario the idea but your purple, is you but, would be selling purple team sells the deleted tweets opposition of Green team. opposition research so you are selling opposition research to the masses. Exactly. I, I think again, dude, I'm it's a paper it. trail. I'm over a paper it, man. You are well, you are outside you are, of that. every in and in, 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 in every moment I'm like, Brian, take a picture of your face and sell it. And you're like, all right, but what if I'm what, what if, if I made I a funny face makeup, and, I only, and I was and I, I deleted was doing, it and, and I was shaking it. my face <laughs> and I'm like, no, just yeah. Yeah, what if I delete it? What if I take my phone, I bury it in the ground, and I never look at it for 50 years, and then I dig it up and I sell it then? No, literally just a selfie. It's it it's on the file side that that things are that things are 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 are, are distinguished. And if anything, what's the two things are fascinating about it. Number one, now the mundane becomes precious because you are able to codify the the amount of those that you are deciding to mint the other thing is that bryce compared to your fine art world in the realm of physical goods the size of your community is you know, limiting right here if you've got let's say a a relatively small uh comparatively like podcast fandom and this thing is and and uh, uh, people are just gathering things for a dollar, two dollars, but it happens every week. And there's people that really, really want them. That's like uh, the the size of the market for the collectibles 
can be a lot smaller like mm-hmm. than 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 it is otherwise because it's it's quick it's easy they don't have to go through authentication because they're already uh, authenticated mm. like like the I, overhead on mm-hmm. on price from every side except for who's buying it is virtually nil i i think the authentication thing will will be more of an issue i i i think some of the some of the big pushes that we've seen with nfts are from people who say that they own a picture or a meme or whatever and i and i think i think in terms of like the actual legality it, it, it's it would be very you're either buying something that's worth nothing and it doesn't matter who sells this meme or you're selling something that has has uh outside of uh of a, a collector's oh, so you're, you're I, contr- saying inter- inter- I think there's of- you could legally be like can you actually sell this picture you didn't take so, all right, yeah, you're saying on the side of the people that are minting the NFTs. Like, for example, right. if, if if we did want to sell, we'd actually, now I'm actually wondering whether or not exactly where it, it like, what was the time that you shot the dart into your mouth, was that on a pre-show or on the show an or an after, after show? show? Because it was an old NSFW. Yeah, it was yeah, on it was an, after an after show. show. I wonder, I wonder who would exactly in a court of law own right. that uh, uh, clip. There's uh, there's a website but, where you where you can take uh, you put in a Twitter URL uh, put a URL of a tweet and it'll generate an NFT for you but I don't think that you own your tweets in any way that that so service that, yeah. could make a token for you or that you could sell or make a transaction on that unless these things are absolutely no value that 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 is an element of of of, of Wild West that we are we are going to see hashed out right so yeah. like we are we are for the sake of this argument talking about things that we would be fairly clear like we own this that's happening right now yeah the the initial nft conversation from weird things we could create an nft of and uh, uh that would be a, a a thing a thing that would go out there we would know we own every stitch of it and 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 that i think is what's fascinating i mean the to me you the only way that you are negative on NFTs is if you believe the concept of a digital collectible is not something that will work. Hmm. Well, I, I, I think I would say that you're going to have, there, there's going to be a market for part of the things that keep a lot of the virtual currencies going is the fact that there's a lot of gray money, you know, gambling, et cetera, stuff in there that can't really leave the system, right? You know, you don't want to pull it out of the system because of taxation, because of other things. Black money, too, as far as drugs, other stuff like there's a lot of money in the system. There's a lot of money that's the moment you it's kind of like the Japanese economy right now. You don't want to start selling stuff off these things and have it be devalued. So there's always going to be a certain amount of money within the system. NFTs are another way to diversify that. I think that's a lot of what we've seen, some of the value and some of the higher and big profile things. We're either people trying to pump up the NFT NFT system because of things made behind the, you know, behind the scenes to sort of create newsworthy items people with a lot of virtual currencies trying to diversify. Uh, I think that my bet would be you're going to go through the bubble. The bubble's predictable because people are going to try to make NFTs of everything. And then people are like, oh, I like this. I'm going to buy this. And they're going to sit around and realize nobody else wants this thing. What's the value? And maybe you hold on to it. But in the wrong run, you're going to be less enthusiastic, less enthusiastic to buy things. But in any area where people are gambling a lot, i.e. sports, I do think that stuff is going to have a longer term value as NFTs because I do see people, people spend billions of dollars gambling on sports books, wedging, you know, wed- you know, making wagers and stuff. They're invested in that world. And so sports, it's why anything people gamble on sports, their sports memorabilia and gambling go hand in hand. So I think that I, I if you're to predict what's going to last to uh, like, uh, you know, people pay a lot of money for the original first draft script script of a thing that became a thing or whatever like as as a speculation of like i i enjoy uh you know this i i i see a lot of great things coming from this author jk rowling i'm sure she'll never get canceled uh uh, and then you 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 buy a digital one of the first 50 copies of uh of, of of the the proto harry potter books maybe i i mean i i don't I don't know what the market's really like for Potter merchant for Potter. I mean, there is a mo- obvious po- a market for Potter merchandise and stuff, but I don't know what the secondary market is for memorabilia. And like, I don't, I don't know what that is, but I know like sports is evergreen because again, people obsess and the amount of money they pay into it. And they, 
you know, there are people that spend large amounts of their income watching sports games, betting on them and other stuff. So I could see that market going through fluctuations, but being big, but being big. Like, but I, I want, I want an original copy of Harry Potter, not an NFT of a thing that was a print thing. Maybe. I mean, and, and the question is the, you know, the market will decide the fandom market will decide, but a lot of people with the NBA top shot thing, uh, collectible wise, why people are getting into that is because these are just clips. And the benefit of just a clip is that same clip was seen in America the way it was in China, where there are more NBA fans than there are citizens of the United States. Mm. And so now you're not you're not worried about regionalizing buying an NBA card that's going to be in English as opposed to whatever the Chinese equivalent would be. Now, if somebody is somebody wants to be in on buying that and doesn't matter what language they 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 speak that's going to mean the exact same thing because it's just a gift here's here's the other thing is at some point maybe maybe we're all sitting in the tgi fridays uh, inside the orleans uh in over my shoulder i'm seeing bryce watch uh the ducks play mm -hmm. and there was a particularly moving moment and i saw it really affected him or whatever uh, I, I could totally see myself like, Hey man, what's, what's a fun, you know, I don't know, $50 birthday gift. Hey, I got you an NFT to, this is the moment and I'm giving it to you because it clearly was such a moment for you. And I really enjoyed how much joy you got in that moment. I don't understand because it, but Bryce, it, Bryce often <laughs> gets very emotional watching Oregon ducks football and, Look, and, and that's it. And I, that mean, was, I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, no, for real. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's oh, okay, a gift. okay. I thought I, I, I thought you were setting me up for something. <laughs> no, no, no. Here. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I think it's like what what would be what would matter more a, a a an NFT of that moment that lets somebody know, oh, you remember that moment? Like, oh, remember how fun that was? That's an emotional moment, or well, or, or fifty dollars to Amazon. Well, and, and imagine imagine some MCU movie ends, and we happen to have seen it together. And then maybe maybe it sparks a like a thirty minute uh, argument or discussion or breakthrough moment, whatever it is. It means something special to uh, let's say the four of us, right? Um, I could totally see buying as a gift, like just here's the thing in a limited form, and now we have it. And and however you visit it, you, you, what we're really visiting is that moment and that discussion that that we had for thirty minutes after that movie. I mean, it, it, and uh, like, yes. And also, yes. I mean, yes, basically. Right. I, th I think that's, that's where, you know, if you are, if, if we're looking at like the collectible or gift market, right, that's something where no one's going to make a trading card of that mid season pack 12 game from two years ago. Um, but it would be well, relative easier to yeah. to make a clip uh, a digital clip oh yeah. i i i think that's where it's heading i think that as a game is going on you're going to watch people bidding on stuff on shots and stuff and bidding to buy the thing after in the heat of it how long oh, 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 and pre-buying like like yeah. like oh imagine this like like uh, uh that uh, touchdown NBA just finals. sold for it's like yeah. i will pre-buy there, there's only going to be 500 of them ever i will pre-buy the game winning shot of of this series so no matter what i will whether i'm a fan of the ones or the others yeah they get into crazy markets because like if you know uh if tom brady scores a first touchdown in this game i will pay ten thousand dollars for that nft yep mm. you know um it gets crazy uh oh, all of a sudden now I, there's betting markets on what the value of the nft will be after so you they're not, not betting even... markets brian they're sorry. just markets sorry they're, they're markets correct correct yeah. correct all markets are speculative i gotcha okay all right wow wow okay so and i would give you an example would be remember we talked you know, about the star registry right you know like how that the bulls the bs international star registry nasa does the international star registry or the International Astronomical, some body that we recognize as being real and authentic, it's a different market. 
because then we go, well, NASA authenticated, but even even that International Star Registry being a BS thing that it is, people still buy stars. People still buy them. Uh, because I, I, I might have bought one. Recently? What, would you like one? I'll yeah, sell it to you. Are they running out? I'll take one. Yeah. What's the value of it? Is it yeah. the only, is that the that's only what Mark Twain said. He said, buy a star. They're not making any more. <laughs> Turned out he was wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a moron. Idiot. Huh. Cool. Uh, Luana, do you picks? Yeah. I, the, yeah. The, there was something that we were talking about in the night attack pre-show that, that I didn't share with you, Andrew. Um, uh, what's the best way for me to get it to you, Bryce? You can email it to me through your email. Uh, okay. Well, here, well, Brian, well, 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 yeah. well, 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 you do that. I will say that I'm continuing to watch Cobra Kai. We're on season three. I remember having a conversation with one Andrew Maine where he was discussing some of the limitations of the budget of Cobra Kai season <laughs> three. Uh, and while I am very much enjoying it, I, I've, I've enjoyed how much they have uh, steered into some of the soapier elements of its DNA in this third season. I think some of the independent movies that Andrew and I shot in the 90s had a more extensive location list than uh, what they have done for Cobra Kai season three. Like they are a few like pond five watermarks away from uh, <laughs> uh, just like, I mean, they, look, I, I, it, in a way, I, I, I know this is coming off as, as caddy. I, I love the fact that on the budget that they are doing with the talent that they have, they've been able to tell a story that is a little bit more expansive than just like, shooting in one apartment complex over and over and over again. Uh, but boy, do they make that dollar stretch so far that you could need mist coming off the screen. <laughs> I, yeah, my crit is you, you, it is like, it is like high school play level set design at points. They're literally like, we were just, Oh no. They put a planter here. This is a different location entirely. <laughs> like there is, and and it's like you're in an apartment. Like, how come they don't have any deadbolts? Nobody has any deadbolts on these doors. They're all interior. Like it's, I don't want to rip into it. I don't know the circumstances of it. The writing is really well done. Everybody has their best part. I'm assuming that like somebody embezzled all the money they had for art department props, and there are no people working that department because as a guy who worked on props on TV and film and had to pull things out of thin air. I'm like, this was solvable. This was solvable. Like this, this could, this doesn't have to be this way, uh, <laughs> which does, drives me crazy. Does watching season three take anything away from the first two seasons for you guys? No, no, I, no, it's great. I, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's, look, there's I mean, a scene, it, there, there's a scene we saw last night where they've done a great job throughout this the the entire show of weaving back in i love the fact that that all of their flashbacks are just these karate kid clips they play them so often but it's it, it's it's i think it really does set a great model of like how to do a nostalgia based show and move it and move your story forward uh but they they get into a a they they write themselves into this challenge where a very beloved character has his final words from his deathbed read. And it is so over the top and so amazing. Like I, I was just, I was crying laughing while enjoying the fact that like it, this is the karate kid is universe. Is it like a CW level, like schlock? It's, it's Andrew almost, shook his head no a little bit. No, no, no. It's I think it's the writing. Okay. It, uh, the writing's no, 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 no. The, right, the writing's really competent. Like there, it does take a yeah. turn. The third season gets very much into the teen drama side of it. Like, yeah. like we we're we're in like some real teen soap territory. Mm. And, uh, and, and let's make a Vietnam movie in our backyard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's. Uh, 
it's, <laughs> it's there's there's the vietnam there's there's a character who is in vietnam and we get flashbacks and you're like it's literally like we went to your compound brian and we said <laughs> let's shoot a vietnam movie here uh you, okay, is no, that the no, bob's big boy in just the background here. there is that a big donut uh, it, you know it's funny a little no we'll just put some bamboo over that <laughs> a little uh, we're gonna little... go to home depot the garden center then we're gonna shoot we're gonna go to the home depot garden center buy everything we can and we're gonna shoot a vietnam scene <laughs> a little behind the scenes sauce it. uh we uh we shot a thing on how to make a, a particular type of tent uh and and it was so simple to make the tent that we decided like hey let's just pick one spot in the back of the acreage and just keep walking into it Hanna Barbera style, <laughs> no, because it would be, it would be kind of cute and funny within our context, and so there's definitely like four times we continue our conversation into the same spot. Okay. Um, Other picks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we talked about uh, it in the pre-show uh, last week, uh, right before Night Attack. Um, uh, through Reddit, I stumbled across a bootleg. Uh, I need to go buy the actual book somewhere. It was published in 2008 um, by, I think we decided it was uh, Ukrainian, Croatian, uh, 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 oh. Istanbul, Turkey, Turkish, Turkish author. Um, uh, it's called All Tomorrows. And uh, imagine, imagine all the messed up uh, art of H.R. Geiger, only imagine he put in liner notes of explaining why each successively uh, more horrific uh, vision were increasingly awful perversions of actual human beings. So he posits that that humanity gets their act together, has kind of a golden age where they go and, and infect, uh, uh, yeah, we spread out through our spiral arm of the Milky Way, and then sooner or later, uh, uh, whoopsie doodle, turns out somebody else uh, uh, has intelligence and shows up, and they feel entitled and privileged and religiously thinks it's their mandate to just re, re genetically modify all possibly competing creatures to their whims. And there are some truly horrific visions of, uh, uh, for example, you know, they, um, uh, they, there is one, uh, one, one species is called the colonists because they had the tenacity, the audacity to stop the first two invasions by this alien species. Uh, and upon falling on the third, they were stitched together and given one eye and one mouth and a rudimentary connection via nerve endings so that for generations to come, they could, uh, they, they, they could uh, know exactly how bad they done effed up. Uh, likewise, there is another group that are called uh, Manzels, where they're fully conscious humans with human faces that lack hands. So for the next four million years, they, they develop an oral tradition where they sing mournful songs about their, their loss at the hands of these awful aliens until eventually evolutionary pressures dictate, well, you know what? Why are we wasting all this energy on brain power? Uh, the younger, dumber, faster breeding versions, well, uh, guess what? They eventually wipe out. That's how that thread ends. It's, it's insane. It's bonkers. It's awful and haunting and i loved it uh all tomorrows did you now uh i i believe this is just you can just read it on like I, i've got the wikipedia because they have linked to like a full pdf is that where where you read it did you buy it somewhere uh I, I i want to buy it because uh i want to support creators of all uh, uh varieties but but i definitely uh th th there's both an html version out there and a uh, Google Drive, like full PDF of it on there, but it looks like it's a Turkish artist, uh, uh, CM Kozman, uh, created it. Um, man, uh, uh, I liked it a lot. Uh, I liked it? Yeah, no, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot, and and it's haunting, and it'll stick with you. Cool. Uh, I got a uh, I got a pick here. Uh, I got a video game pick for you. I have been. Um... Uh, I, I've been playing this for a little for a little while now that the the PlayStation Five version of it has come out. Um, it is a, a new game from Sega and the uh, uh, the studio that makes the Yakuza games. They've got a new one uh, called Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is um, uh, very briefly the Yakuza games are slash were a series of fighting games. You would run around the streets of this fake 
uh, uh, a Japanese city and you would go and beat people up. I, the visuals are not maybe matching everything. Uh, like, yeah, let me get there. So you, they were a series of games where you would go around and you'd punch people and uh, 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 you would punch enough people until you won the game. Uh, and they're very cool crime dramas about kind of betrayal and uh, and uh, commitment to to these um, to these different clans of the the Japanese mafia. Uh, they have a new game out now called Yakuza Like a Dragon, um, uh, which is takes that uh, f- takes that structure and the setting right. It takes the idea of like kind of being in the crime family, kind of being away for a while, coming back, trying to figure out what's happening, but instead making it um, a turn based role playing game. So instead of you're still going around the streets of this fake uh, Yokohama city, uh, a new city for for the series, um, but instead of uh, of going into a fight and hitting buttons to punch and kick and stuff, uh, it is it, it's turn based. So you actually are uh, you and all of your friends are on the street and it's your turn and you choose attack and you pick attack or you choose a skill and you pick a skill and you choose your target. Um, and I think it's it's. It doesn't sound like it would work because they seem like completely divergent genres. Yeah, it sounds a bit like the VAT system of Fallout or or uh, Tactics sure. XCOM style or. Uh, yes, but it's also but it's presented it's presented and it's made to feel real time, right? So like while you're picking stuff, you and all of everyone in the fight is like kind of moving around the environment, and there's a little bit of timing where you know if if someone gets knocked down. If you can get another attack and while they're still down, you get a you kind of get a buff and um, and it, it it ends up working really really well. I like the the Yakuza games because they've always managed to do two things: have a very interesting and s- relatively serious central story of hey crime family stuff. I got to figure out the crime family stuff and I got to beat up all the right people all the right number of times. Um, and then everything around it is a lot of the stuff that you see you know, on social media and stuff, all the goofy stuff, all the goofy stuff lives around that story, right? You can go, uh, one of my favorite mini games is there's a theater. And so you go and you sit and you uh, watch a little bit of dialogue of these fake movies. uh, And then you play a game where you have to stay awake through the movie by like hitting buttons to knock out these little sheep guys who appear next to you. And you got to do them in time where they'll cast enough sleep spells and you got to- It's amazing. um, you got to not hit the chickens because the chickens have uh, symbols and they'll and they'll wake you up. So uh, I, I think we're coming up on a hard out. Oh, okay. uh, uh, what other uh, did anyone else have picks? Uh, I, well, Andrew. I, yeah, I think Andrew, Andrew's the one who had to uh, he had to get out of here for a meeting. So I guess that'll be it for this week uh, until next week. It's been weird. I'm sorry. I, I I got tricked. I thought I thought Andrew had enough time to just shout something out and then leave. Uh, but I guess I he was already no. gone. No. Yeah, he uh, he had a last minute thing come up and he had to he had to bail. Yeah. Um, but I think I think it's a good game. It works serious and silly. It all works together. Cool. Cool. Yeah. That just uh, that end of the end there. All right. Cool. Did we did we say it's been weird? We did. We did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well. Uh, game plan on After Things. Hello, After Things. Um, do you guys want to do just a quick like fifteen minute? What have you been up to? Yeah, let's 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 just roll it, right into it. It's getting real it hard out. to not talk around. Uh, Don't no no no, no, no I know no. I know I'm it's, saying it's, it's actually, I'm, I'm saying it's hard. It's just hard. Just life is hard. Things are hard. Okay. Let's go to the bathroom. No. Okay. Hard. Answer is no. Don't say hard while you're telling me you're going to the bathroom. Ew. Hi, Justin. Supposed to be the consistency of toothpaste. (laughs) Wait, that can't be right. I hope that's not right. It is, yeah. I I guess I've never touched it. I only know I only know I only know it as it drives away. I don't really see I don't really know how it's doing all, further down the road. I hate to see it go, but I love to watch it leave. <laughs> oh shit. Oh uh, my gosh. Literally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we uh we were we've been shooting we've been shooting Modern Rogue stuff um for the past like the past week and a half almost nonstop. Yeah. Um but yesterday and so yesterday was like kind of the end of the session and 
it was kind of a long day and we were doing an episode and it was getting it was inflating a little bit um and so uh, cory cory who people have seen on modern rogue many times now uh was on the episode and uh uh he you know i i don't know how much you how well you know cory but cory loves his dad jokes he loves the corny humor yeah. And so we're doing this bit where they're just kind of given some free space for like 20 minutes to build stuff, whatever. And const just every time Corey is is doing some dad joke about um, whatever they're building. I don't want to spoil whatever they're building, but yeah, make just constantly. And it, it was <laughs> it was a lot. And I think I think I think it was so much that Brian has internalized a certain amount of it. <laughs> A certain amount of just dad jokes. Just dad like, jokes are going to happen yeah. now. That's just, this is easy. It's an easy pull. Uh, I would like to criticize Corey, except for the fact that he is now effectively my unpaid property manager, as oh. Ashley has done nothing. We got we got the A-OK -okay from Brian mm -hmm. to send furniture for the new house uh, to the, the HQ, Here, to the puppy. HQ, oh, okay. And so Corey has just asked, hey, just so I know, just send me like the, Shipping, the, the tracking, tracking stuff yeah. just so I know what is showing up. Uh, and like, you know, we had a, a couple things show up and, and uh, you know, it's been OK. And then Ashley's talking about like, OK, well, what about like the couch and the bed frame? And a dining room table and chairs mm. and stools. Ooh. And I'm like, all right, we got to call Brian. We got to just make <laughs> sure that that's okay. And Brian gave the okay. So it's like there is now a lot of furniture that is showing up to, to HQ and it is being managed by a selfless, selfless uh, Corey. I mean, we should have plenty of space for furniture stuff. We should have I, yeah, I mean, look, I, 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 I would say knowing the, the facility that there is enough but it's also not like you know <laughs> the ymca right it's not like it's not a community property it's it's oh, yeah. brian's place that Corey works at mm. so it's like you do got to get the sign off from the boss before you just start like <laughs> oh yeah here's like you know like ba -ba 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 -da -ba -da -ba -da, like just mm -hmm. the one box after another is showing up as we you know, we're going to try and, like, furnish the entire place within 48 hours. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't think Yeah, because I guess because you guys are in kind of an apartment, so there's only so much living furniture that you would have, right? Well, we realize that, uh, you know, we're not... Our, our major dresser that we have in here is actually built into the apartment. So mm. it's like, so that is a no-go. We need a dresser. Mm -hmm. We need a bed. Because now we're going to have three bedrooms. Real bedrooms, yeah. So, like, we need to keep our bed for the guest bedroom. We're going to get a new mattress, which actually already showed up. Mm. And Oh, that's uh, what that was. I thought that was a promotion. Frame. I thought that was a promotional product that I could steal. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Bryce. Uh, so, uh, St quote yeah. unquote steal. Shut up, everybody. That's just. Well, yeah, no, have. It's, it's swag. They, they if it's swag, it to, uh, if give it's, us stuff if it's so that swag, we can have yeah. it, so we know what exactly. it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like, there's like a, a a lot of shit that we just need to buy. Like, there's yeah. a lot of stuff that's that just you know, it's a, a the downside of buying a house that's you know, a uh, four times bigger than your current living place is that you need four times as much stuff to make it spare. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. um. And just like, yeah, I mean, like I, in my old apartment, which was a little bigger than what I've got now, I actually had a little space for like a dining, a very squat, a small square dining table. And I don't even have that anymore, you know? Because um, that was the other, the other thing for us was realizing like, oh crap, we need to, um, it doesn't make sense to move a lot of this stuff. Like for, for the price it's going to cost to move it. Uh, we just might as well buy just ones. buy another thing oh, because yeah. uh, everything has a cost to get it from point A to point B. Yeah. Uh, did you need a break, Justin? Nope. All right, let's roll. So, yeah, well, I don't know. We'll keep this 15, 20 minutes or so. Cool. Yeah, kind of, let's uh, do it. Updates yeah. on where everyone's at. All right, I'll bring yep. us in. In three, two. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the After Things Podcast. I'm Bryce Castillo, joined as always with Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Brian Brushwood. Ahoy. 
uh, this is the uh, this is the show after weird things about being creative professionals and uh, uh, making making our way in this digital wild digital wild west. Digital. I, I got a question to both of you guys because okay. you have both done this on a level that I have not. Move I am to tearing apart my. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> In the process of moving to Austin, I'm tearing apart my studio because this desk, this stand-up desk is going to go with the movers. The rest of the stuff is going to come with me as I drive down. But I've thought a little bit more lately of rebuilding the studio and just trying to think of like what lessons have I learned mm. in uh, doing you know, uh, uh, in, in, in now rebuilding stuff. Like now that I'm going to have more space, a lot of the things that I had solutions that I had built my, you know, built this studio around were around limitations, limitations. I'm not going to have anymore. Like, uh, this is not going to be, uh, the, or the, the same place that I do video stuff is not going to be where I record podcasts anymore. So mm. I don't have to worry about, uh, uh, sound in the same kind of way like i'm gonna have a different place where i just record podcasts that will be more sound controlled uh i don't know if i need to have the command center idea a anymore because i'm gonna be doing a lot of one-man band stuff where i'll be on a larger set and i'll be switching stuff with multiple cameras so i don't know if i need like a control room kind of area so i, mm, I you guys have both built studios and then rebuilt them i was curious about lessons that, it, that you have learned. It's 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 awesome that you're asking this because we went through the exact same situation like one year ago when we started when we finally got this place soundproofed. We realized this is much much bigger than quite literally than we know what to do with because previously we had spent what two three years in inside of a spare bedroom. Uh, on top of each other, we were able to kind of divvy things up. Like, here's the control center. Here's, uh, using air quotes here, you know, the stage as it was. Uh, and and uh, our decision at the time was, well, let's let's kind of cordon off. Let's just make it a little bit bigger, <laughs> because the mm -hmm. like like the full room, the full studio is what five times, seven times larger than it's the one gigantic. spare bedroom. And it's, right? and it's yeah. very high ceilings, which is tough. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, it was like, I think Bryce and I, and, and forgive me if I'm uh, overstepping, I think we both had the sense of, yeah, we don't know how to let's, well, let's just, let's just occupy this corner, you know, <laughs> like, like, yeah. Yeah. And, and there were other ideas in terms of keeping like, uh, like part of it is like VR space. Like, right. If we go in, if we encroach into that half of the studio, then suddenly you're not going to have space to do your VR stuff. And then right. that's going to be a whole thing. Right. Um, so yeah, I would say like, you know, you will probably be better served because you will presumably be taking a, something that is set up as a bedroom or an office, like a smaller yeah. kind of singular room, um, for one or, each of each of these different well, two, sets. two, yeah. So there's a, a a play area, and then there's a um. Uh, that'll be the that'll be the uh the 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 you know, TV side, and then there's the the room that will be my office slash recording studio. So that brings up an interesting question because uh, and and we've we've uh on phone calls kind of kind of touched on it, but but. Uh, haven't explored it too far. I don't know if right now is the best time to do it or not, but, but like there's some discussion to be had of, of in a world where you're going to be moving to a city where, yeah. you know, on a, either on a personal level or a professional level, you will have access to, a a, a lot of space, uh, to do things that like the question kind of becomes how much of what already exists at HQ, is it in your interests to duplicate at home? And, and we had talked a little bit about like, uh, 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 as you build stuff out, maybe, maybe, you know, the, the, the Justin area is more audio centric and you make sure that it's isolated and, and, and good for audio. And if you plan to do a video thing, you know, we're able to work out a, a, a way for you to do that out here at, at HQ or whatever. But 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 there's so many interesting questions about like um, 
uh, I, 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 I don't know. Like, I'll, like I'll say, I, I, I sorry, go ahead. I, I, I uh, this this is kind of a similar thing. I don't know that I have a, a great takeaway, but I think that this parallels a little bit to how like like I do a bunch of streaming here on the channel and stuff and mm -hmm. a bunch of stuff, and I do that all at home. Um, even though we kind of have all of this horsepower and all this space and stuff, just be partly because like it's it there is a certain simplicity when you're able to do X, Y, and Z from your own space. Right. I don't need to drive out here 25 minutes to do a to do a stream and then make sure I can drive home at the at the end of the night you know i mean the the, the, the those little things kind of add up into making making having your own space uh, uh, valuable. valuable yeah well and, and and also there's the not insignificant um unknown chaos vector of just who is here who is doing in. Stuff. yeah exactly like right. like their guests or whatever well you know i i would say the way i'm looking at it as uh you know th there is a visual studio for my twitch channel um, and, and that is something that is kind of operated outside of, uh, out of, uh, outside of the stuff that we do, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the politics podcast certainly as well. And that's something that, that I'll, I'll be able to build for, but that, that TV side is like one part, just a great, great, perfectly lit stall shot. So I can do TV hits and stuff like that. Like I've done on RT and hopefully we'll continue to do on other uh, uh, you know, any place that'll have me, uh, and then a larger set for, for the Twitch channel. What I view, uh, uh, the, the HQ and, and the puppy for is for stuff that we do together. You know, like, uh, there's, uh, uh, the, the, the great resource of me being in Austin is not my ability to continue to do my, my, my Twitch channel. That's stuff that I'm going to be able to do Right. At, at home, the, the great value of, of, of the puppy is going to be me and you being in the same place where uh, uh, we can build whatever stuff we want to build together. Well, and then in that case, let me let me flip the question, because like um, I I think we have pretty good audio uh, in, in our studio even now. But 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 Bryce has expressed that uh, you're able to hear echoes here and there and so on. Like, like, uh, 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 if, if yes. If what you're saying is that this is a unfinished treatment of this space, then yes, I would say that there's room for improvement on the sound side. Right. Well, and, 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 and it makes me, it makes me excited about like, yeah, make a sound studio so I can go get perfect recordings of things <laughs> because, because occasionally I, I need to get them and, and, and we don't have any spots that don't have at least some kind of echo in, in them. Well, I think, I think for, for what you guys do, you guys got a lot of space and, and you have a lot of great, amazing visual space. And I think that's, uh, uh the, the, the crazy thing about HQ is that it's it's still finding its sea legs because so much of what you would have wanted it to do uh, and and what wanted it to be uh became impossible just as it was coming online to be able to offer it right. <laughs> like having the space for a live audience having people come and and stay there uh having live events uh uh shooting the the, the larger space because you're going to employ any of those things that we just mentioned, uh, those all became strictly speaking illegal. <laughs> like <laughs> shortly after you it, guys it, had, it, had kind of gotten it ready for unpopular. it. <laughs> like, like that suddenly it's hard to book guests when it's like, Hey, you want to travel through a disease filled tube to land in a land where you don't know and just trust that nobody has the, the, the bug. Yeah, the life stopper, the poison air, like, uh, yeah, and then mix in whatever anybody feels about, you know, the, the politics of the region they're coming from versus the region that they're landing in. Like, there's there's a million different things that you guys are in 2021, hopefully, as the world continues to get as vaccinated as possible, as fast as possible, um, that that will now be something that you guys are are doing. What what I can and you know what 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 I can do is create my little podcast recording Shangri-La, right? Where in in a world where let's say I was working on a podcast with Bryce, mm -hmm. despite the fact that me and Bryce are gonna see each other all the time at HQ, 
I'm going to be able to have a perfect setup for exactly what I want in terms of podcast recording. And he can show up to my place. We can bang out, you know, uh, uh, that if I'm working on it, I'm editing it, then boom, it's exactly in the place where I want it in the place where I'm going to edit it. Uh, it, it's just a, a, a great situation, uh, there in, in a place where with, with what you guys are going to do, you guys have a bunch of rooms that you could probably soundproof and make great, but also the destiny of HQ is on more on the side of people coming and staying there than right. taking that real estate and making it a, 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 you know, a radio studio. Right. And, and, and you bring up a good point because I can't count the number of times that it has been such a blessing for somebody to, you know, you get an email that says, Hey, you said this and we need this. And it's like, just the moment you read that email, it's like a, a, a ticking clock. And it's like, how great to just, you know, walk upstairs, turn on the thing, press the button, say into a perfectly good mic, the exact right version of the read that you needed to do and get it to them immediately and then send it off. And then we can yeah. work on building you an ISO booth. This is not, I, <laughs> this is the first time hearing of me. Uh, yeah. Cause uh, I've no, no, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, I, I, I think here's the, the, the larger point. The larger point is, uh, uh, I don't believe, I believe our ambition outstrips the real estate that we have combining both the, 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 the puppy and my new place. Like, right. I don't think that we're going to be in a situation where we are in any way duplicating resources that, 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 that waste what uh, is, is happening there and the, 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 the valuable elements of that uh, uh, the, the, the puppy are, um, just over the top, right? Like, like, like there's, there's so much amazing space and, and whether or not you have an ISO booth there or, you know, uh, if, if there's something that we're working on together where, you know, uh, it makes sense to, to record stuff in my place, more places where we can get excellent top quality work done is, is better than, than fewer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, but I mean, again, that, that to me is burying the lead. The, 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 the lead is, we're going to be within 10 minutes of each other at, at, at all time. And, and, and now, you know, uh, visually that unlocks a lot. Um, and then in, in the soft benefit of, of just having more of that, like before and after time that isn't tied to Skype calls and, and, and life on, on either side of things. Well, so it, it also now, now that I'm really wrapping my mind around it, uh, it occurs to me like, um, you know, 10 minutes away from each other equals five. The, there's going to be a bunch of restaurants that I ain't never been to before that I'm going to suddenly be a fan of because they're exactly five minutes from me and five minutes from you. <laughs> so, so get ready for a lot of Applebee's podcasts. But 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 there's a lot of um, uh, whether it's uh, Patreon lenses or TikToks or what have you, like a lot of the in the moment stuff is, is wildly impractical to, to produce the way we produce this live stream and then edit down and then go ahead and then release and, and so on. Uh, or, 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 or when I say maybe not impractical, but, but labor intensive, um, man, I'm really looking forward to an organic way where we can provide more, more of that, um, uh, 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 between the lines content, you know, like, like we're getting ready to do a thing or we're talking about doing or whatever. Hey, settle this bed for us. Or which would you rather see more of one or the other? That kind of stuff. Oh yeah. I, I think, uh, uh, it's, um, you know, the, uh, the sky's the limit. And even think of it from, from the other perspective of like, you know, so I'm going to set up this site, uh, you know, in my room or in my, my new house for the politics podcast or, or the, sorry, the, the, the live stream that my, my channel, the Justin, our young channel, that's something where I don't know if Brian, if, if Brian, if you've been on it, it's been because we had something wrong with the night attack channel and I had to broadcast happy hour or something, but it's like, now I can have you roll in and boom. Now you're just hanging out with me on 
my channel. Uh, like, yeah. in, in... <laughs> by, by the way, easy pull. It's like, uh, hey, I need to have you on the show uh, because I stopped listening. The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's just going to be like the the like you know, Simpsons gag of like, you know, you, you leave your phone and it's just like bop, 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 door closing, car peeling out. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I, I think. And that doesn't take up resources at HQ. Right. Well, like, and, and, and it also and, affords both of us. Um, you know, we went through that phase in the early stages of the pandemic where we only had the one internet resource here. And eventually we, you know, uh, now we have two, uh, and, and a third option backup or whatever, but it's like the idea that, that there becomes like a fourth option and, and there's ultimate redundancy where it's just like, uh, well, at the very least we know we could do this, you know, at, at, at this place or that place. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a big believer in streaming entertainment and podcasts <laughs> entertainment. And I think more places that we can create it, uh, is, is, is going to be going to be the best because I think that, uh, MRHQ is something that's only going to continue to, to build and, and, and be a, a, a vibrant place. It's going to look, I think it's going to, it, that place is going to get super busy, super fast, you know? And, and I, and some people have, you know, told me when I was moving, I'm like, they're like, Oh, you're going to like set up an office and, and stuff at, at, at the puppy. And it's like, look, I'm going to be there a lot. Like it is a place that I plan on spending a lot of time, but also like, there's a lot going on there that like the, 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 the busyness of that place over the last year, I do not think is going to be indicative of how busy it is going to be over the next five years I, I feel that it is it is a very 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 you know depressed asset in terms of foot traffic and just things capital t things that are happening there uh, uh from uh, all hours mm -hmm. and and it'll always go in fits and starts like we we realized as more of us get vaccinated um you know okay we're we're leaving the phase where production bubbles have to be two to three weeks at a time and entering the phase where we'll spend four or five days shooting and, and yeah. then, you know, and, and it'll be okay. Um, uh, it's, uh, uh, and then, but, but, but I think there'll always be some amount of like, okay, we're all in for this little ride and now we're all out for a little bit. And it, like, to be honest, it was kind of nice coming in today and uh, my job this morning was to watch the shows for spoiler in time. And it was kind of neat to just be the only person on property for, for a hot second. Yeah. And who knows exactly how long I'll get know, to the, enjoy the, the that. Bigger, yeah. yeah. The bigger <laughs> stuff happens and the more stuff people are staying there and the more, you know, between the guests and the shows and the podcasts and, and, and everything. It's like, if you just even think about like, all right, if it was Ollie Ollie oxen free and everybody came in, immediately and you were like had the ability to schedule the people that you would want to schedule for some of the other shows that's a busy place tomorrow right mm -hmm. like that's and it's certainly a lot busier than than it has been for the last year yeah yeah wow that's coming isn't it oh yeah <sighs> uh uh in terms of adv advice for your studio space justin yeah um do, do you guys have a stream deck I think you do. Oh, right? we do. Oh, yeah. We got a couple. Uh, yeah, I'd say that those, the thing that I'm kind of uh, going to be start working out next with the marble stuff, um, uh, once those are, those will go back to being weekly uh, this week, uh, is the, the, the one I got a, I got a new larger stream deck, which is great because it has more buttons. It has more buttons than I've used on the little one that I had. Um, but the thing, um, it still doesn't feel like enough buttons. And so I, I'm, I'm needing to work out, okay, what is, what is the technical workflow of the marble stream look like? Right. I'm going to yeah. start with this clip and then I go to this scene and then I go to this scene. And then when I do a race, I do this and I hit these buttons. Um, and if there's a rep, uh, 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 uh I know for me, because that there is a bit of a a bit of a system and it's got a very it's got a very general flow to it that I'll be able to, you know, write down, Hey, I hit this and then go this and I do this and I do this, um, to help just even lay out 
you know, the stream deck. Like it, it seems like it, it would not be very important, but especially when you're doing, if you're doing something meant to be kind of tight and, and as live, um, and you're trying to not just be at a control station the entire time. Yeah. Uh, figuring out, okay, how do I, how do I lay out this thing when I only have 15 or however many buttons, um, in a way that's valuable. So I'm not hitting eight buttons to find the thing I'm looking for. Um, I would say if, if you haven't already done that with, with, with your live stream, what, what a typical live stream does look like, um, may, maybe consider that going, going line by line and being like, I, I hit, I mean, very nitty gritty. I hit this button and then I hit this button. I think that's, that's the biggest idea for me with the visual set is figuring out like, okay, well, first things first, what do I want visually? And I know what I want visually is kind of a, a version of what I had with the smoky back room set, but filled out and with, and a, little, a lot more expansive. Uh, I want multiple cameras to shoot that, including like one camera where I can just go to a monitor and like I'm researching stuff and typing it up. Uh, and so then at that question, at that, at that point, the question is like, all right, well then what is my, switching situation like like do i have the stream deck with me the entire time am i going over to it because i don't mind for it to feel a little bit like i'm physically switching if i'm physically active in it but it is a, a whole rethink of like okay well like, what are the moves what do mm -hmm. i do where do, do i sit down when i sit down does it zoom in do i need a zoom in shot like uh, uh and and what amount of flexibility are you going to give up by doing something like that? Right. I mean, if yep. you don't have a mouse and keyboard in front of you, you can, you, you can program in everything you need to do in stream deck ahead of time. If you have the enough, the metal, um, but you lose a little bit of flexibility in terms of, Oh, I want to add a source on the fly. I want to go and add yeah, this thing. Exactly. And yeah. I don't know how much of that is a, is a portion of what you're doing with the live stream. I know for the marble stuff, I, I, generally have all that stuff pre-baked um yeah i mean i think the biggest thing that i would that that i go to is uh, uh i'm not adding sources a lot like i'm mostly just talking and then bringing up some web page that has you know the a, a visual element or i'm reading something somebody's sending stuff it's breaking news you know there's video that has just like broken so i'm going to that um but but again by and large, it's going to be trial and error. Uh, the thing that's going to suck is that, uh, you know, I think certainly the streams are going to suffer for a little bit. And uh, I'm just now, it's like just becoming real that I'm like, oh, crap. I'm definitely going to have to like either find a guest a guest host for some of the stuff or I'm going to have to, uh, you know, like uh, we're now no longer in in the like, it's it's down the road. Now it's in, it's in, it's in the two week. Mm -hmm calculus of like oh i'm like moving states and i'm gonna have i'm gonna be camping in my own apartment for like six days before i drive down to la before i drive down to austin i i would say that that having gone through uh, the bulk of that process and continuing to go through the bulk of that process on the modern road channel you get a lot of grace people really enjoy watching if, yeah. if not growth transformation and and it's like you go back to like you know three years ago and we're always shooting in the warehouse and we're doing our best to almost make it look like a set and then and then at some point it's like well we're in a new spot and so you know there's trees in the background or at some point we did a whole week's worth of programming just just standing on a giant slab with them under a blue sky mm -hmm. um, yeah uh, but for, I, uh -huh. I, I, I think you'll you, you'll have more permission to to, to low oh, yeah than you yeah. would expect well and and I think for us um I, I think part of part of why we've had as much grace is because uh uh we've we've always had a very high level of fidelity i don't think that there's been a there's really been a point with say modern rogue where it's been like oh they moved spaces and it sounds like crap and it looks awful like like and episodes like, are poorly edited they take cute. five yeah. years like, long and like people probably i i think ult like yes people will have questions about what the set looks like and why it's in one place or the other but uh i know like for for me you know with with the move to zoom, a lot of, a lot of podcasts that I listen to have moved to zoom and yeah. uh, we, we have kind of got a handle on doing remote podcasting, but a lot of people don't. And no. that has meant that uh, a but, lot of podcasts that I like 
suddenly what? sound like garbage. <laughs> they they do sound sound bad, it's or they like have the, trouble. Yeah. You know, they have trouble, and they and they aren't taking the steps to, um, to compensate for that, right? So it, so Justin, like if your stream looks like junk, whatever, yeah, uh, like you know, you gotta you prioritize the most important stuff, and people can put up with a lot of. Uh, of say visuals if the audio at least sounds good right they can put up with like uh the the audio is maybe a little uh, i think audio is is super super important the fidelity of that is so important audio is crucial Um, Um, lighting can be bad uh because there's less there's people mm -hmm. there's big streamers that have crap lighting like uh audio has got to be good and the stream has to be flowing Mm -hmm. like uh, otherwise, you get into my least favorite thing on the planet. Oh, no, you're talking about your favorite thing. Yeah, where no, everybody is helpful God. and they just shout actu- out, have I actually you tried have, blank? I have a visceral reaction to you even joking Sorry. about the fact <laughs> that I, like... like and I, you it, know it, firsthand exactly. Oh, I know, I know. And what's funny is, like, my uh, my taunting comes from a place of that, like, year and a half to two-year gap where... Justin didn't understand the pain, but I did. And then finally, Justin understood the pain. And then- there is nothing worse. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing worse than like when the worst part is when they're helpful or, 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 or like, like, or you, when they're you right. No, uh, well, I mean, when they're right, but even when you're just like, all right, there's a buzzing in the line and everybody's saying like the, dumbest stuff and and they're asking you dumb questions that you've already answered because they're late and it's like it's nobody's fault but you hate them and you want them all to die and like but you can't say that because they're like your best friends on the planet and and they're great and like literally it is the thing that they believe is helping the most that is hurting the most like it's there's some kind of psychological torture that can be based on the idea of tech support via chat room when you're, when there's a problem on a, on a stream. So, uh, but, but to, to, to kind of put a button on it is like, yeah, like whatever difficulties or transition you have into your new space, uh, you know, a, I'd say focus on, you know, keep, keep that fidelity element a priority and, oh, yeah where you can't or where you have deficiencies look into where you can put in un put in time that you don't normally do to make those those things better right so if you're recording the podcast and maybe your space is not perfectly treated yet right like make sure you spend the time to figure out gating or noise removal on that because people oh, people are yeah. like I, I, I say this a lot and I don't mean it negatively because I am in this cat. We all are in this category. Consumers are fickle and they won't tell you when they leave. They, yes. They, they, some people make a big, big deal out of I'm leaving, but most people will just not, they will just walk away and you will never know why or when. And the f- fidelity is the worst thing for that to happen on because a lot of that you can work, you can massage and you can work out as long as you catch it. And that's very tough when you do live no, to say yeah. for Twitch, it, but you got to catch it. It's I, I, I think I think as as far as the podcast goes, that's going to be because I've gotten good enough to do the road shows. They are all going to be road shows until I know exactly how, mm-hmm. like I am I am going to produce them in in the new studio. Absolutely. Uh, the sneaky thing about the uh, uh, the fidelity goodbye is that even the customer doesn't know why they're leaving like they just haven't gotten around to listening to the last few episodes and then they've gotten in the habit of not listening to any of the episodes and they're like oh no i still love it still love it oh when's the last time you listened uh according to my app three years ago three years ago was when the last time i listened and i and and that's that's a pattern of behavior we've all gone through i've certainly had podcasts Mm -hmm. like that that i wouldn't say that i hated it or i stopped listening to it for any specific reason it was just you know, you go in and out and sometimes it's, it is a technical thing where you're just like, ah, eh, I just, I, I can't do the zoom episodes. I'll, I'll, I'll get back when they get back to in person or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, no, that, that, that work ethic is, uh, is huge. Um, I think we did it. I think, yeah. I think they'll do we it. Save the world. Uh, well, uh, thank you guys for listening to another fabulous episode of, of after things for Brian and Justin. I'm Bryce. It's been after. 
Hey, good stuff. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. All right. All right. Mm, mm, I'm going to go work. eat. All right. See you. We're going to go offline. We will be back in about two and a half hours for Cord Killers with Brian and Tom. Yeah. Uh, check out Justin R. Young on Twitch. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. But maybe I'll bend it out of shape and break it in half, then I'll escape and wander around where the top is always down. I'm dreaming.